Hey YouTube, I'm Ali, welcome to the channel. Now, whenever I speak with someone about board game design, I learn something new. And when I spoke with Elliot Locke about his card game, Influencer, I learned that not only do you have to be creative and persistent, but that it pays dividends to be topical and importantly, share the idea as early and as often as you possibly can. Elliot spent a long time playtesting, trying to find every opportunity to refine his idea. And because of that, he's ended up with something that's quick to play, easy to learn, and a lot of fun. I hope you enjoy the interview that's coming up. I had a lot of fun making it, and I, like I say, I learned a lot from him. If you've got any questions, feel free to drop them down in the comments below. And if I get a chance, I'll ask Elliot to pop along and answer some of them. Who are you and why do you get a right to speak about board games? Sure. So um, my name is Elliot um, and I'm honestly a nobody until I started working on games. And then I was a somebody as a nobody, if that makes sense. It's so nice. basically I've, I've come into board games with no experience whatsoever, except for the fact that I've uh, developed and built some successful businesses, uh, had some successful exits from those businesses, and I've transferred into board games. Um, from lockdown, uh, I noticed that one of the industries that thrived in lockdown as opposed to backtracked was the board game industry, and uh, it's only growing. Um, being a massive fan of board games uh, for years, not the big uh, sort of hobbyist ones that I guess most of the board gamers know, but just the typical ones that the everyday average family would pick off the shelf and buy. So nothing special, but I like them. And I like yeah. anything that brings people together. Um, if you enjoy it, play it. If you don't, don't. That's, uh, that's, that's a very perfect. good philosophy. I like that. And, so, um, yeah, sorry, go on. No, I was going to say, so what, what, do you, what do you do at the moment? Is, is, is board games your full-time career job? Are you in the board game industry or uh, are, you, are you doing something else? And board games is a a passion that you're you're um harboring like the rest of us so uh yeah so i mean i'm, I'm a chimney sweep at the moment uh, from a line of chimney sweeps my dad was, i grew up chimney sweeping my dad and he grew up chimney sweeping his dad um so we're a family of chimney sweeps and uh um and my background was in making dreadlocks so my biggest business was uh, dreads uk so i founded that company and uh, just on the on the brink of selling it now um obviously i've cut all my dreads off now so it's better to hand that baton over to someone that still has them um so board games um i with the dreadlock business and i also uh, was a lead vocalist and toured all over the place so i used to work the festival circuit and we used to take around whatever was handy whatever games we could play particularly if you sort of sat around at an airport or you sort of sat at a festival you know around the tents either between bands or just chilling out with a beer um the quick, easy games that you can pick up, that you, you know, not necessarily party games, although that would work, but that type of thing, the thing that you can teach easy and it's quick to play and you can put it away in your pocket and, you know, pop it out. I just love that. Um, our family as well were, were uh, quite avid kind of Monopoly deal players, you know. And so, um, yeah, so I, I mean, the, the idea for my own game I had for years and just never got round to it or, or really took it that seriously until the UK Games Expo last year. So just over a year, um, I, I got invited along, uh, went along, met some game designers and just thought, well, why don't I? Uh, so it's called Influencer. So it's about <laughs> influencing. Um, something I just fell into. It was never uh, a, a, a sort of, um, what would you call it? A, a concerted effort. That's the right term, isn't it? Concerted. It was yeah. never a concerted effort to sort of um, think that's what I want to do and that's where I'm going. Um, through my music, um, I was doing stuff that was a bit different. And um, so it started trending on, on YouTube and stuff um, and, you know, got sort of close to a million views. And um, as a result of that, I then had the, the companies that were making the, the, the technology equipment get in touch with me and say, hey, do you want to um, demo our equipment at events and do talks at universities and, um, and you know, promote our gear, basically? Because um, I, I, I just have I've got, I've got quite an analytical mind. And, um, and so when I was sort of demoing this equipment, um, I felt that I could sort of paint it in a picture that made it easier to digest than reading a rule book or reading a, the, the instructions. So I did that and it was quite successful. So I essentially just became an influencer before we knew what an influencer was. So essentially, I had the, the idea for the game um, a number of years ago. 
um, in terms of the mechanics. Um, so generally in life, I walk through life and my, my, my brain's going, shh, shh, doing a million one things at once. And, and I tend to get exhausted quicker than most people, I think, because <laughs> just constantly thinking. But I, so I had the idea for the mechanics. And, um, and so I've had that for a while. But how I was to skin it was really the you know that that was where the decision was what am I going to do it originally it was it was going to be a game about um being on the festival circuit because it was while we were on the festivals that I sort of pieced it together and um it's just what I was into at the time I I, I was living on the road in a bus traveling from festival to festival uh, working the festival circuit and I thought maybe I could make a game about that um but having made the uh, made the dreadlock business um and uh you know, develop that and sort of sold that on. Um, I realised that with um, certain types of themes, um, they can be quite niche. And the trouble with a the niche, there's, the niches have positives and negatives. Um, with dreadlocks, particularly, it has a massive positive in that if you're into dreadlocks, you are into dreadlocks. And so, it's very quick and very easy to to, to really dominate that sphere. And I did with Dreads UK, um, but there comes a point where it caps because the niche is only so big. The market is only so big. Mm -hmm. So when I was making this game, I loved the mechanics so much. It was it was a game, mechanically speaking, that took elements of lots of other card games that are just our favourite. And I thought, I, I just want to add, I just want to tweak a few bits. I just want to add a couple of bits. I've got this idea. I've got, you know, I'm trying to make something that I wanted that didn't exist. Um, and so I, I was thinking, how can I make this as accessible as possible? What's the biggest game that I could think of? And most of the uh, seasoned gamers are going to sort of scorn a little bit here, but it is Monopoly. And everyone knows it. Uh, we've seen it repeated time and time again. It's, it's because it's so easy to understand. Everyone knows the concept of capitalism, whether you like it, whether you don't. Everyone knows it. So it's very easy to teach in that sense. And I thought, well, what's, how can you possibly get bigger than that? What other thing could you possibly get that's, that's bigger than that? What's current? What's relevant? Influencer. So the two big things that I absolutely love, the two big games, one was Monopoly Deal, that I mentioned yep. earlier, and the other was a game called Grass that was designed in the 70s. It's an old card game. I think I've got it here somewhere, actually. But there was a couple of mechanics in that that were just different that I'd never seen in, it in, in, in other games. So it was the coupling of those two games that I wanted to bring those together and really shape it um, to, to, to be another version because I love those games so much, but there just wasn't anything that was as good as those out there, and I, I wanted it, so I made it. Yeah, so I mean, when I was putting together the, the you know, c c um, connecting the theme to the mechanics, um, I wanted the the theme and the player experience to really be immersive in a way that people could understand the mechanics of what it's like being online and having that the the you know the power of of having so many followers and the influence that, that can create and the difference that, that makes and the mechanics of different actions that take place like having your, your, your account taken down and blocked and the impact that that can have. And, and I wanted to replicate those experiences. Um, and and I'd, I'd like to think I've done that. I think I, I, think I have. I, I feel I like I have. Um, but uh, I suppose that's down to the player to you know, sort of give, give you the feedback. But so a lot of it, particularly like, um, I mean, shutdown's obvious, right? You know, we know the note cards. We know how they work. It's pretty obvious. So, you know, attaching that to... Um, uh, instead of nope or instead of just say no, it's shut down. So you're shutting down someone's computer and unplugging them, you know. So it, it so that one's very easy. But then there was some, there was others that weren't so easy and weren't so obvious, like hacker. How were we going to uh, put that together? And then after a you know bit of working out, okay, well hacking someone else's profile, what you know. And so you start to sort of craft it, and it so where it starts off with two very distinct games that are the origin of what I loved and had those aspects in it. And it still has those aspects, but bringing the theme in and using my experience of what life was like as an influencer and going through those different um, online interactions that actually we all experience, um, it, it then changed the game itself and it sort of took on a life of its own. I think that's really where the, the craft come in. Um, the, the best decision I made was not to hold too tightly. Um, it, it was to just allow it to grow from that point. Yeah, so, so okay, so when I, when I sort of moved into it, my intention was to create a game that was so accessible that everyone and anyone could enjoy mm. it, right? Um, and and, and that, that was what I set out to do. Um, slowly as, you, uh, as I went on, so I'll take it, for example, um, one, of the, one of the earlier starts, when, it got, when I got to this point and all the mechanics were right, 
and I took it out. Uh, the first place I took it to was a pub in Wrexham uh, called the I can't remember, called the Magic Dragon or the Magic Tap, something like that in Wrexham. And uh, and the whole pub just stopped and turned around. I was like, what's this? Because me and my friends were playing and everyone was, you know, it was loud and fun, you know. And lit, the whole pub turned around. They wanted to get in, engaged and we were exchanging details and they said, I'll come back. We want you to put events on. And it just blew up. Um, it was amazing, and that was my first experience, and I expected every experience to be like that because it really set the bar high. Um, so then I thought, right, well, um, th this is when I started going to then uh, the, the board game cafes um, and, uh, and and play test events and, and spe specifically like game meetups, you know, of seasoned gamers. And I found that people very quickly scoffed and turned down their nose at it. Um, in their eyes, it was a party game, and party games are not for us. Um, but what was funny was when when I actually got it to the table because I'm, I'm a bit of a bit of a hustler when it comes to getting people involved in things, and um, uh, so anyway I got these got these guys together and we all sat down and uh, got them playing and they were laughing and they were joking along and they were having fun with it. Uh, but it was so funny because it was so contrast from what they were saying before they played it and the 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 initial uh, the initial move into that arena was really oh. But come on, and I was really fighting against letting that cat, you know, take hold of me, um, and uh, and so pushed through, and they were all laughing and joking. We had a good time, and 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 I stayed in touch, and it was it was good. Um, but what I find is the response from the seasoned gamer that are you know into big games like you know Gloomhaven or mm. uh, Terraforming Mars and all these big ones that we know, um, you know, people that are really passionately into those hobbyist games tend to look down their nose at it. But then they play it, and it's mm. we're, we're all good. But yeah, that's I would say that that's a typical response from that group. And different groups are, are different, but certainly in the pub, every time, hands down, no issue. Playtesting is my favourite bit of the whole process, hands down. Hey, it's my favourite bit. It still is, and I still do it. And uh, basically, just I, I'd carry this with me everywhere I went. I was playing with people at the bus stop. I was playing with people in the bank as I was waiting in the queue. I'd pull people. So, hey, do you want to go and cut? So it, it was a constant thing. I've been doing it nonstop for the last year. Um, I ha I um, was basically a stay-at-home dad, um, and uh, and I still am. So I, I you know, look after my dad as well as uh, – sorry, look after my son as well as work in the other hours and things. Mm -hmm. um, and, uh, and so in those times where I had my son and he was asleep, I'd drive to all the different board game cafes, knowing that the staff on the quiet moments would have nothing to do, and I could rope them in to, to, to play – uh, influencer so it was just every opportunity really and then so by the time it got to the expo it, it was pretty there you know any sort of artistic endeavor where you're pouring your heart and soul into something and you, and, you, and you want it to be the best thing it can be whether that's in game design or writing a song or if you're an actor or or if you're a painter any of these arts any sort of artistic expression you're putting your own stamp on things and then putting it out into the world for them to critique and judge you um and that's really tough um because um you every stage of the way you think it's ready no it's not it's ready no it's not and you just keep doing that until it actually is um but the process to get getting through that is really difficult i remember the the first time i took it to my dad um because like all of us, but particularly boys, we, we want to win the favour of our dads. And so I remember the first time I took it to my dad and it was it was the biggest moment for me. And, I, and, and it just wasn't ready. But I was so sure that it was. And I, I laid it out and I explained it to him and it, it just it didn't work. Um, there's been a lot of going back to the draw, drawing board to, to really finally hone it. Um, and uh, so that's been the hardest was it's those moments where it doesn't work. Um, that, I think that, but also, um, I think when when you put stuff online, I mean, influencer is such a, a controversial term. So everyone knows what an influencer is, and we are all influencers, whether we like it or not. We want our opinion. Anything we post online, we want it to matter to mm. other people. We're in, we're all influencers, whether you like it or not. Um, and uh, and so um, because it's such uh, such an invasive term. Um, Everyone feels so passionately about it one way or the other. So you either love it and you think, yeah, yeah you know, in, in the sense of this is going to be the making of me or you, you're you just fun and, and happy and playful about it. And you, you, you don't really mind either way. You're just a happy go lucky person in in your in terms of your engagement. You could a lot of people absolutely hate the term and can't stand it. But everyone feels passionately about it. Yeah. And that's the key. And so um, so 
posting about that online in the different groups um, always comes back with a very specific uh, response that is the same every time I go to the same type of group. So, it, it, so that was difficult, but it was also really helpful because what that does is it, it really finally hones who your, your target market is uh, and who it isn't. The, the, it's been a, it's been a, a strange road actually because I wasn't I wasn't sure how best to go about it when I, when I decided to make it. Um, I, I mean, I've mentioned about the industry change and how this has thrived and stuff. And there's there's a certain you know in the back of my mind a certain element of you know wanting it to be big and successful. But actually, I made it because it was something that I wanted to play and 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 that's as you know and for, you know the dream for me was to be able to sit with three of my closest friends. That, that we play games together and play together and enjoy it and we did it um so i think um the the, the most helpful advice that um i wasn't given i just i remember just sitting there just i, I was praying about it and because uh, it was one of those days where um, it was really tough really really tough and um, one of the things in, my, in my, my faith life that's always helped me is this idea of ambition okay and um, uh, one of one of my friends I was chatting to the other day he, he had a term for it that was brilliant um, I can't remember what it's called but this idea of ambition it's such a killer you know when we have such ambition it kills every ounce of creativity because it no longer is about just crafting and finally honing something you're enjoying it becomes about this thing that you're trying to attain and trying to reach that's out of your control the only control you've got is what's in front of you and so when i took so so, so i would say if you can uh, if you can remove that sense of ambition which is this is just just for my own personal experience i'm not saying that this is in any way you know the, the best advice in the world but certainly for me the moment I removed that ambition and just reminded myself of the reason why I'm making it is just to sit with a few mates and enjoy it. It, it. it takes the sting out of when things don't go your way. Well, folks, that was my interview with Elliot Locke and his card game, Influencer. Uh, you know, Elliot had a lot of passion and I want to thank him again for taking time out to speak with me. But I also hope that I was able to portray how much enthusiasm and excitement just oozed from Elliot about his game and about the process of building it. If you've got any questions, please drop them down in the comments below. But until next time, take care, guys.